10 offloads to 7. One forced dropout by the Titans. It's 357 tackles played, 272. Three ruck infringements against the Bulldogs. Zero inside the 10s. Four penalties conceded to five. 11 errors to eight. And all the stats say the Titans probably should have gone, won this fucking game. Jeremy Marshall King with 42 mm. tackles. Fermo with 32. Josh Adokar with 317 running metres. And Tino with 183. Burton missed six tackles, made 25. Sexton missed three and made 24. Burton with 126 supercoach points. Josh Adokar with 110. Jeremy Marshall King with 108. And Aaron Clark with 74. First of all, I've not been to a Bulldogs home game in a very, very long time. Is Ace it, still in charge of the Bulldogs, aren't they? Who? Ace. Ace. Yeah. Leading the kennel. Yeah. I'm not sure, but the kennel okay. were there and they were lively. And that's what I wanted to bring up. The support and the active support and the passion that you see th- for 80 minutes throughout the game. I've not seen something like that at a, a rugby league game for a very long time. Those fans, right? You want to complain about Brad Arthur getting... Rabbit dogs. Uh, Brad Arthur. Jake, Jake Arthur getting booed for a few minutes in the the pregame for Parramatta. Those <laughs> dogs fans <laughs> literally for about 60 minutes... On and off, but overall 60 minutes during that game, the Tino's a wanker chant was going up. And for a bit, it was, <laughs> fuck you, Tino. After he went off for that shoulder charge, let's be honest, on Tavita Pangai, like, and the drums were out and everything. And as we were walking back to the station, back to Penrith, they were still playing the drums and they were at the thing across from us. And all the Doggies fans started chanting, hua, 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 after the game at the train station. Like, it didn't stop. And I just love the passion. But... Uh, at half time, I was shitting myself. I was like, I've come to a Titans game for the first time in three years. I'm going to lose seventy, like seventy to six. Like it was, <laughs> it was horrible. I, I, but um, look, there, there was a period there in the second half where they did actually have a bit of the momentum. I don't know how they managed to get it back from the Bulldogs after that first half, but um, they just to me still didn't look like they were ever going to win that game. That um, just just the link up play between Burton and. At a car, obviously, you, you put more focus on it when you see it live. But that, the chemistry that they have is just amazing. And I wouldn't say that alone, but that was a huge reason as to why they won the game. I mean, you look at it, um, I think five out of their six tries were Burton and Ado Car. I think they both had a, a try assist or a couple of try assist seats. I mean, um, and of a course, of it was, it was, well, it was clear, that, fir- that first one, questionable, like... Uh, and I, I think he just I sort right. of. I, I, I think, think they, he just sort of got off the I think mark they fast. On, I, think I don't they think it was too about that. Yeah. that. That was fine. I, I, I think it was fine. It, it was just quick. Josh had a car's quick. I'm not sure if we uh, write that down. We all work, we all work, we all work, we all work that out. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, yeah. Burr, burr, but um, um yeah. Next to Tohu, write it there. <laughs> and, uh, I think that's. What, I, I think overall the Bulldogs were firmly the the better team, other than that small period the Titans got, and I think some of it was luck as well. I think due to a bit of a Bulldogs drop-off. Uh, your usual characters, I think, Tino, I think I was happy from what I saw from Mo as well. I don't think it, it, mm. it wasn't like the dominating performance I was expecting he to see from him. He played a bit more I, of a link man, actually, to be honest, if yeah. like it in this game, but anyway. But I feel like um, overall, well, the Bulldogs, I think they're four to end strong, but it, uh, uh, that... Um, Adokar Burton connection, and I think, uh, I don't I don't think he did too much, but just the just seeing the positioning of Kyle Flanagan, sort of what he was um, getting himself into if he needed to sort of support those blokes. I think he did a, a good job of that as well. And, of course, we had the whole Tino, Tevita Pangai thing, which I'll, I'll get into more what I thought of the, what actually happened um, in, my, in my salute and slap. But um, it was interesting. I was looking over at the bench for half of the first half, thinking when's TPJ going to come on? And just the what, the Bulldogs' passion again, the roar. He just slowly walked into he just slowly walked into the field straight straight to the back fence. Like he didn't didn't make a whole hoo ha about it. Back fence, and you sort of look over and you see Tino making sure he can sort of line himself up that he was there, and you knew that, that they were at least going to try something. And they both looked pretty calm and relaxed. And I thought it was just funny as soon as the ball kicked, they both just fucking ran like a um, a, a couple of balls. Um, running at a, at a red flag, and uh, it was great to to see. And the uh, overall, it was enjoyable because of the support of the Bulldogs fans. To be honest, because um, I ended up leaving thinking, oh, that was pretty good, even though my team was pretty crap. So, yeah. I was going to ask you. Well, you covered off pretty well, but you general, we don't get to talk about it a lot. The live game day experience was <laughs> well, I, I, quite good. I, I As Ian said, still hold up these days against some newer. Well, Newer Com- stadium? Combank. Oh, was it Combank? Yeah, was it? it was Combank. Oh, so it's, yeah, well, it's, still the be- it's still the best stadium in the world. Yeah. Um, and, but, but I'm going to say it again. What made it 
uh, sort of a unique experience was seeing the Bulldogs fans are going, oh, it's, it's actually okay to actively support your team and chant for 80 minutes in a rugby league game. Who would have thought? When was the last time you supported your team? Last time I supported my team was probably uh, <laughs> week one of the finals. Last 2021, last yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about it off air. Gump? Well, I think it's good that the Bulldogs are actually playing a brand of footy to give them something to cheer about, Ollie. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if, if you went and watched them under the, the Trent Barrett regime, <laughs> there's not much, there wasn't much to cheer about. Well, with, they were probably with chanting Barrett's up, wanker for 60 up, minutes. Hit up, hit up, kick. Reposed so training session. So you can't session. really mm. cheer. So we, 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 we just, no errors, isn't we? Better yeah. complete our sets. Look, I, I love the brand of footy they're playing. Their defence still, for me, they're, you know, yeah. conceding points, but... Four of the tries were from kicks and two of them were from a, a fullback that hasn't ever played fullback before and was probably out of position yeah. and maybe aren't scored if your normal fullback's in the yeah, team. So maybe. in terms of that, the burton a car combination yeah. is amazing. I really love the way that TPJ came on and, and really stuck up for his teammate, even though that... TPJ's a Queenslander and Burton's a, a a New South Welshman and it was a Queenslander yeah. that did it to him. But TPJ dogs. was, yeah. you know, yeah. doing it for the jersey. So as a supporter, I really enjoyed yeah. the fact that, that he added that bit of mongrel. And I Absolutely. think that TPJ, yeah. if he can curb that, it's really valuable. You need someone yeah. like him in, in your team. Yeah, I, um, I yeah. love what Max King brings to, to the team. Like he... Run hard. He looks for the offloads. Even Paul Vaughan the last six oh. weeks been really good. Like he, I know he's, he's off to England and that was always probably going to be the plan and they've got enough to cover him. But the way Paul Vaughan's going, I'd rather probably keep him than Luke Thompson. But um, I don't think you'll keep Luke Thompson. He, well, I don't – yeah, but, and he's no loss. No. In, in, in the end. For, so in three terms ones. of that. Yeah. So, so since the Bulldogs have been playing all right, Luke Thompson hasn't played. So, yeah. you know – the coach has gone and, and one of your highest price, price players is, is not playing as well. Look, I, I agree with Ollie. Kyle Flanagan, I thought it was probably one of his better games. I like it, the, the fact that he actually did get tackled a couple of times. Like that he, he took the ball to the line. Run. There's a tremendous yeah, run where the, the, he could have busted him the, wide he out. Took yeah. the, he took the ball to the line and, and whatnot. So if he's going to be the seven moving forward, and he, he may well be because there may not be anybody better on the market. Not many so, sevens out there. you know, in, in terms of that, that he's got to put that into his game so that Burton can link with... At Ocar or Fatala Mariner or Kick Out or whoever that might be mm. moving forward. The Dolphins have actually got a good one in Marshall King. He's really come on he's in, in terms of that. Really he's good. been really good in, and he's got some speed out of dummy half and sort of offering a little bit. The Titans, are, again, Tino was good. Mo was. But he's another one. Was like, look, Brimson look at was how good. he's just changed completely since Barrett left. Like, well, he like was he's, just he's, a bloke who made 40 tackles under Barrett. And passed off the ground to Dude. his outside blokes. He never took the line on. He never got involved. And we, we called for it week after week. He's made one run this week. He looked really good when he did it. He needs to get out and run. Needs to get out and run. The week that Barrett fucks off, the, I think he made three so or four line breaks to set up a try. Whether, like that's, um, just, whether that's instinctual he's always had it or whether Potter's held. I, I think I reckon it's instinctual. I think really he was just held back. Well, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, well, good, it's a combination like a, of both. Like, like you think about in – and I'd lost my train of thought, but in terms of – the whole coaching change thing. Oh, that's every player in the Bulldogs team in the last seven weeks has looked better. Yes, heaps better. Than you know, they, they you see, so heaps so better. That's what you and, want and, from and a coach. And when you hear right the players say, all, you know what they do? They've all said when they've asked them what the change is, they go, "Well, Potts has come in and he told us to be ourselves." Oh, fuck all, he, Jesus. He's walked in and gone. How do you want to play your footy? Oh, I want to be aggressive. I want to do. I know that Fucking go and do it. And mate. there's no pressure. There's no pressure on them. They're not going to make oh, or whatever. But now but he's, he's actually turned around and put his hand up to coach now. Which in, is in terms of that. So so look. As a, as a fan, I'm just happy that they've improved. Would you keep him next year? And they look – no. Nah, well, if they've got Cameron Serraldo, I'd get Cameron Serraldo yeah. at this point in time. I think that it's it's easy to go in and do the job that he that he's done and win a few games, but still defensively there's – a lot of problems. Yeah. In in terms of that, they still can they still conceded twenty six. I'd yes, probably hit up Serato and ask him if he's happy to have him in and around the team because he seems to have a pretty well, he's good. He's got he's got, he's, got he's, got a, he's got a job there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah obviously no got issue. a pretty good rapport so, with and, the and, blokes. And so. he's a, he's he's a bulldog man, Mick Potter and whatnot. Yeah. So to to keep him, I think would be valuable. But if the the rumours are right, and I think Serato stays or comes, you keep Burton. 
You may get a cry. And, and you and may, may get a Liam Martin. And may you get may a cry or somebody else. But yeah. you know that Burton will stay well, if Crichton's Serraldo's there. With Serraldo. They, yeah. they say if Serraldo goes, Crichton's going And as then well. you'll get Crichton so. as your one. And then you get Reed and you get um, Kickow in there. Hey, happy So that, that's what I'd go for. And and looks like it's and just a matter and of and announcing you know what? it. Now, once they split that little love circle at Penrith, who knows who else might and, yeah. come over some more love. Well, Gump actually sort of br- brought up um, – Something that um, I just remembered as well, and is how you two were talking about at Magic Round. You, you could sort of notice who were the players who were actually talking. Adokar's obviously one for the Bulldogs, but the other one was actually Kyle Flanagan. And no. I, I'm not saying he's a better player than Burton or whatever, but he was actually talking to Bert, like Burton a, a lot, and actually be like, I'm, and you could see him going, mm. I'm going to. And a, a lot of it was setting up like plays he's where, been where a good Burton game would be. Directing but I, I, you know, it, it's just players, um, yeah. interesting to sort of see that side. I'm not giving Kyle Flanagan credit for. The amazing player that Burton is, but actually just sort of say it's probably helped Burton yeah, where, where Flanagan's been job. like, and they've actually been able to commute. Yeah. I, I don't know how different it was under Barrett or whatever, but they actually seem to spot him on it. Just said, what, what, like, actually, but that's the thing, <laughs> you know, it's what? It's probably, Fucked if I remember, who it was. But, uh, yeah. actually allowing him to it was sort, sort of, and it was Wake, Wake, Wake and, and, but, yeah, it's Wake and actually allowing him to actually sort of talk and I guess sort of sort it out for themselves a bit. It's like, it's like, okay, we're positioned here, what are we going to do? And actually, together to even yeah. have some like you can have a preseason and all the rest of it but you need to play fucking 10 tough games yeah. together to get some sort of combination going on mm. at points in time people have rated Flanagan highly yeah, right absolutely. he was rated as a junior went to the Sharks right the, the Sharks. Roosters obviously mm. thought he was a pretty good player to sign him I know they got he rid was of him for a long time but he was yeah. for, for the that first year half I didn't year. think he was, no, he was, fine. was that bad for them so look he can play it's, right. I think it's just a matter of now He's just getting not the a, right He just players. doesn't take the game on. He's no. the bloke who sets the game yeah. up, but he doesn't sort of take it on his own bat to yeah, the kid's go 20, out and do it. You know he he did I mean? this but weekend a little bit. All of a sudden he does it a little bit more next week. You know, by the end of the year, who knows? I've probably got a bit higher praise for the Titans than you guys by the sounds of things. I thought the Titans weren't as bad as um, everyone's saying AJ they were. AJ fullback's the right decision, right, for sure. The first 20 minutes, they were disgusting in defence, and it was probably what lost them the game, as, as well as a couple of um, cherries that were just plucked out of the air by Addo Carr, <laughs> who runs 80 metres and turns around, and there's 10, 10 12-point swing in a game, and you lose by 10 points. And that comes down to some poor decisions from a 5-8, throwing some stupid passes that should never have been thrown in the first place. So that's second... Uh, sorry, that first intercept should never have gotten anywhere near Josh Adokar because he was standing in the fucking line when he passed the ball. Like, he was always going to take it and just run the length of the field. It was stupidity. But um, I thought when it got down and dirty, I thought the Titans were actually winning the battle in the middle of the field, especially when Aaron Clark came on. He made a massive difference. He's been – I don't know what's happened to him in the last three or four weeks, but he's definitely flicked the switch since they've put him back to 13 and he's playing through the middle. Um, he, he's very aggressive and he goes quite well through the middle there. But the Titans just don't have that touch of class to finish off plays. Like as you mentioned, they were all the tries came off kicks. Um, they don't have a ball player that seems to be able to set up the outside men. Um, Brimson does it, but he does yeah. it more off the back of broken field where he sort of gets through a gap and then puts someone away afterwards. Mm. There's nobody that plays before the line that sets up any sort of attack for them outside of that. Sexton's decent short kicking game, but they really need either a really good ball playing 13 or a six that can set up and put put away some of their outside backs before the line. There's no getting away from it. The Titans' big problem is their outside backs in defence. They <laughs> they get carved open so often in the centres and in and around their halves that it's just not funny. Um, the Bulldogs' attack was fantastic at times, especially that first try where Burton in and away and carved them up down the outside and Josh had a car backing up on the inside. But I yeah, think their defence, the Titans, is absolutely abysmal. Yeah. Like, in that game, the Bulldogs had 42% of the ball in the match and scored six tries. Yeah. And, and Karaz probably should have scored two. Yeah. <laughs> that You know, Brimson's tackled him over the sideline twice. Yeah. So, so they, there's probably two more they should have scored. And it, what team scores six tries with 42% of the ball in the NRL? Yes. Like, it doesn't, so it doesn't It has happen. been for two years, like three years. Like, it's just... Herbert, Sammy, the rest of the other blokes out there, like they, they just... Fuck, they they pat, don't look they like they can stop They pat on the tries. back as they run past them. Like, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, well done, mate. See, fucking off you go. And go, you know what? And Ollie was at the game but, and you probably get, you get a better feel for the contact. I, I don't even feel that the Titans tackle that hard. 
Mm. Like yeah. the, the tackles, no. there's not it's really not. any mongrel or aggression. Like mm. Tino's the only magic, one. Yeah. But other really than that, I don't, yeah. I don't see them no as – day. Like you but, don't yeah. think that they can – if a team has two sets at them, yeah. you think, oh, they'll score. They just sort of catch, yeah. and, D- they'll, catch and grab and, and jersey grab and sling them to the ground. You're not confident that the yeah. Titans can stop points. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Plenty. Of, it's, yeah, Jeremy Marshall King was fantastic, as you already mentioned. He caused so many problems through the middle of the defence for the Titans, and that was the middle, which is their better part of the defence, and he was carving that up. We're getting in and out of dummy half. Mm. Um, yeah, he's risen to a whole different level. Sammy was okay ball in hand, but the bloke can't tackle. Tino and Jolliffe were strong. Uh, you know, J- J- Jolliffe has been really good the last couple of weeks as well, coming off the bench for the Titans. Um, he's, he's got a bit about him. He should probably go to a different team, but... We'll get on to that. As should the rest of the good ones. Fermor was okay. David Fafita played his best game this year and, you know, he, he does it every now and then, fucking scores a try and has a couple of tough runs. But, you know, um, Sexton's best game for a long time and Aaron Clark was their best player by a long way. He changed the game when he came on. Carraz is a, looks like a superstar in the making, that young kid. Um, he Another one, just the way he moves with ball in hand is fantastic. Um, he, he never seems to be off balance. He's, He's quick. He's a strong fucker. He's like- strong as fuck. <laughs> Um, he's yep. good in defence as well. Um, Fatala Mariner was one of his better games of the year, and Max Max King was the best forward, the dogs for the, you know, best dogs forward I thought in the game. Um, again, he's a bloke who hits hard in defence. He's always looking for an offload. He's strong with the ball in hand. He he was fantastic, and. You already mentioned it, Burton and Josh Adakar with the difference in this game easily. If, if, if you're a to- if you're a dogs just fan, dangerous all you um. Like- you have a lot of optimism next year because there's You know what makes me laugh, though? I was just thinking about it and we say waxing lyrical about Karaz. But when Barrett was the coach, fucking Ockenball was in the fucking team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we've got Ockenball versus fucking he wasn't Karaz. Even top, he wasn't even top 30. Like he, he came in the game of the COVID went through it. He came in like uh, he's twice as on quick. a train and trial. He's a foot and a half shorter, but he jumps two and foot higher runs than harder. fucking Ockenbord did. Runs harder <laughs> and he's a better defender. Like so, it's, so, it's not a it's, right. it's yeah. But anyway, <laughs> let's just, not, let's just yeah. like what, did he was he just fucking kissed on the ass at Penrith or what, Barrett? Who knows? Let's move on. I suppose that's not bad. No, nah. he's never been kissed on the ass anyway. He's been horrible. I said it. Oh, fuck, mate. He, he couldn't was, coach a manly. He, could, yeah, he was the yeah. worst coach. He was going to be the first one sacked. He always was going to be. We all was knew fucking it. Fucking horrendous. Yeah. And anyway. We all moved it. But, you know, We've moved on. <laughs> but isn't it amazing? But what a difference three months makes. I'm but you saw what he did at Manly. And then Des walked in and six weeks later they were fucking, they won four out of four. six games or something. Like, it's yeah. Just, yeah. Anyway. Um, Burton, no, let's give it to yeah, Foxy three. Burton. I had Burton for three, but mm. Foxy, a couple of intercepts. Yeah, give it to Either Fox. Either way, I don't Fox, care. Fox, Burton, let's try Jeremy it, Marshall King. I love the Fox. 